<clears throat> hey everyone, good afternoon. 2.30 p.m. on Friday, August 18th. For Exprizio here, I hope everybody's had a great week. I am back with another video on this New York midnight price level trading strategy. I don't know, i got to come up with a better name for it than that. Something a little more kitschy, because uh, I don't know. But that's basically what it is. And uh, again, guys, recorded a video two days ago kind of highlighting and breaking down the strategy. So go back and look at that if uh, you have not already done so. That will make it a little bit more clear. I'm not going to get into every detail here. But uh, again, the 30-second version. Is that this is a simplified twist on an ICT, uh, Inner Circle Trader, smart money type concept uh, using the bank reset level that occurs uh, around midnight New York time uh, every night after the trading session. Okay, and then that becomes a very key level for the next trading day after that, that you can either trade off of, trade from, trade through, whatever. It's just an important level to watch. Okay, and, I, and like I said in the previous videos, guys, these are day trades. They might even be scalps, but Hopefully, you know, you're getting in at a little better price where you're not scalping in and out in a couple of minutes, but uh, you may only be holding the trade for, you know, a few hours um, or maybe the whole session, but you're certainly out by the end of the session. Uh, and again, I like to use the five-minute chart to mark off these levels and kind of follow it. Uh, I do still take a peek at the higher time frame, guys. I don't completely ignore what's going on in the higher time frames because it's all about confluence. So if you see... A potential setup, you know, a long or a short setup, saying on a 30-minute or a one-hour chart, then great. Then you know whatever you're seeing down on the five-minute using this strategy will only help you. Okay, so just because I'm saying you enter on the five-minute uh, doesn't mean I completely ignore what's going on on the higher time frames. Okay, because again, it's all about confluence. So let's just look at a few charts. I only took one trade today, uh, namely because I had to go out this morning. So I took the trade. I did end up exiting it manually um, right before I left. I, it was about two pips from my take profit. It didn't end up going, I think, a little higher. If I was home in front of my computer, I would have just held on to it. But honestly, uh, it was approaching my TP area, and so I just got out. And uh, so I didn't have to think about it because I had some stuff to do this morning. So, uh, But we'll look at a couple of charts. We'll look at that trade, and then uh, we'll end the video and uh, just you know, regroup next week. So um, here's the pound dollar, and you can see here, and again, guys, it's mid-afternoon on a Friday. I don't anticipate taking any more trades today, but I did want to point out that, again, this blue rectangle represents the midnight New York time. It's this blue candle right here uh, where this blue vertical line went through, and then I just draw a, bo a box around it. So every morning I go through, I only trade about nine pairs, so every morning before the New York Open, I will go and draw a box around these just so I have a visual of this area. And you can see during the overnight and during London, we traded well below this, kept going, kept going. And now, since early London, uh, early New York, we rallied all the way back, and now we're right back inside. And you can just see how price respects this area. Now, again, guys, if this was not Friday, um, there might have been a potential short setting up here. You know, uh, now that it comes inside this box, and you can see there's definitely a lot of resistance in here. Again, I don't anticipate that we'll really see anything the rest of the day. I mean, you know, we're heading into the last couple hours on a Friday, so I'll just leave it at that. But it does show, again, the strength of this price level, though. You can see after midnight, a couple hours later, price came up, tagged it right here, and then we just kept going down. We had a big pullback. This is probably at the beginning of the London session. We had a nice pullback here. Obviously, I don't trade this session. This was, you know, 3 or 4 o'clock this morning. And then we went down, and then New York uh, opened. And, you know, as usually is the case, New York can definitely lead to a lot of reversals from London. And we saw a price just came up. And I did not trade this because when New York opened, uh, as you'll know from the first video I made on this about the rules, we were already 48 pips from this zone. So for me, that's there's no trade other than maybe a trade back to the upside, back towards this range. Uh, but I didn't take it because, again, I wasn't home. And it, I just ignored this today. So 
But again, the, the main point of showing you this chart is just to again show you the strength of this particular price level. Okay? All right. Okay, so now I want to show you the one trade that I did take today. And this was the Aussie Swiss, and I lost my rectangle here, so let me put this back. Okay, so there was our rectangle. So this was our New York, uh, our New York midnight time, this little blue candle right here. When New York opened today, we were only four pips from this box. And just before the open, you can see we came right back into this zone again and tagged it for the second time, okay? So during the overnight session, during Asia, we went through it. We came back during uh, London, rallied up, came back, tagged it again on a retrace, and then it went during the New York session, okay? And you can see the trade that I took. So as soon as I, uh, as soon as New York opened and I saw price trying to push up, I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to take this. Now I could have waited uh, for a retrace here, but I had my stop. You can see I had my stop way down here, not here. I had it down here to give it breathing room because, you know, I, there's not a big spread on this, but probably a pip and a half. And, you know, quite honestly, if I had had it just below this low, price came down here, there's a chance I would have gotten stopped out on this trade because this is only about two and a half pips away. So I put it down here, gave it a little breathing room. Admittedly, not the best, um, not the best fill. I, you know, this would have been, you know, a couple more pips if I had let it come back. Uh, but it look, was looking pretty impulsive right at the open, and because it had all, it had just left this zone just before the open, I figured it's not going to come back in here again. Turns out it did, but that's fine. I mean, what did I leave on the table here? I left uh, about three pips on the table. Okay, so whatever. Uh, and then you can see price just went right on up. This is where I exited because, like I said, I was I left the house. Uh, just around this time, I had I had to go out. I, I couldn't watch it anymore. And uh, my take profit was actually uh, my take profit was actually right here at yesterday's high. And you can see we did hit that. Uh, and then we you know we went up. We kind of chugged around it for an hour or so, and then finally came back to it. So so if I had left it, I would have hit my take profit. I would have squeezed you know a couple more pips out of it. It's my bad, but. Again, uh, if I was here, I would have left it alone because we certainly had no exit signal. But I had to go, so I'm out. So, um, so anyways, not a perfect trade in that respect. But you can see, again, the key point here is how much it respected this zone. All right, and that's the operative point here. Okay, so we'll just look at a couple of the charts randomly. Because um, I said I only look at about nine different ones. Here was the CAD Swiss. We never really had an entry signal. Price did come back towards it, uh, but it, we never got back into the zone. So again, on a normal, if I was around looking today, because this happened after I had left this uh, break back to the upside, I could have taken this, but again, I, I didn't. Uh, on the Kiwi versus the USD, yeah, I don't know. Oh, I know why I lost that one, because I had to restart my computer. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so on the Kiwi dollar, there really was no trade there at all today. The Kiwi Swiss uh, was down here. And usually the Kiwi Swiss and the Aussie Swiss track pretty closely, but we never got that on the Kiwi. And again, this uh, had broke during the overnight and traded above. So <clears throat> theoretically, there could have been a nice long position here during New York. Now you can see we had a pull back into this area and then price went. But again, I didn't take it. So... But based on this strategy, there was there was no entry. Uh, and then on the Euro GBP, uh, this one was kind of all over the place. Uh, we res we came down, respected this area during the um, during the London session, rallied up, and then we went right through it at, during New York. And then we you know kind of have just chopped around. So there was no trade on the Euro GBP. For some reason I have Aussie Swiss here twice. So uh, we'll just delete this chart, <laughs> close that chart. I don't know why I have it open twice. All right, the euro, um, let's see, here's the euro. Uh, so on the euro, again, we had this one retest way back during the Asian session uh, overnight and uh, came right back down, and we really did not get a signal on the euro. The dollar Swiss, 
Uh, you can just see there was really no signal here. Okay. And, you know, in terms of the strategy. And then finally, the Aussie dollar. Uh, the Aussie dollar was one that maybe we could have used. But as you can see, it didn't really go that far. Um, when the market opened, it opened right here. We were only, we were 14, almost 15 pips away. That's a little further than I like. I just told you in the first video I like it to be 10 pips or less. This could have gone either way. I did have it on a watch list to see if it would turn and break, which it did, but you can see it didn't go anywhere after that. And again, I wasn't home at this time, so I probably wouldn't have taken this anyways because it's it, there's just no impulsive action. Again, a lot of this because it's Friday, and unfortunately, that's just the way Fridays go. You get a little burst, you know, for the first couple hours, and then things just kind of quiet down, especially, you know, in uh, August and summertime months. So there really wasn't a trade on this pair either. So, so you know, if you're going to be disciplined about using this strategy, then, um, you know, again, I just like to look for price that's close by this range and then trade either through it uh, or off of it, which is what I do with the Aussie Swiss. I'm going to go back to the Aussie Swiss for a quick second, and we'll go down to a little higher time frame. And you can see here on the Aussie Swiss, um, you know, you have to look pretty close, but this is the 30-minute chart. This is where we got in. We had this impulsive move, and price was kind of correcting, chopping around. And I did anticipate that we would see at least a little bit higher price move up because we made this new low here, and then price, when it came back down here yesterday, failed to make a new low, and then we just kind of chopped. So I, even though this is technically is still in a downtrend, um, you know, this, this, air, this whole thing in here was telling me that it was probably a pretty good bet, at least for today, that the Aussie Swiss was going up. And as we look ahead, you can see now, you know, this area over here is kind of like our line in the sand. We're sitting right at it. So if we continue to move higher on this pair next week, then, you know, my bias on this pair will definitely shift more long, at least for the short term. And because, uh, again, this is only a 30-minute chart. So, um, but right now, I think it's, you know, I'm neutral as far as the... Outlook for this pair uh, depends what it does off of these levels, but uh, that's that. And uh, where is my pound USD? Oh, I know what I did. When I put my broker chart on there, I, it replaced the pound USD chart. Okay. We already looked at the pound USD, but let me just put this back up here anyways. And, uh, you know, uh, we kind of already looked at this thing. Whoops, wrong template. There we go. Okay, and so uh, again, for the pound USD, we did come right back into this zone this afternoon. Again, probably will not get any trade. In fact, 99% sure I will not be trading this. But it is interesting, again, how much of a magnet it was for this, this zone. Okay, so the bottom line, guys, is if, you know, you're looking for a trade, and you don't exactly get the setup where price opens like the Aussie Swiss did, opens around this box, you know, within 10 pips, then the other trade you could consider would be uh, if, uh, you know, we had strong move away from it during London is a New York reversal back towards this box, okay? And this would have been a good area to target for a take profit, you know, right here at this high and it did go a tiny, tiny bit more than that. But if you had taken a long here, you would have, you know, you would have hit your take profit right here at this zone. Where would you have gotten in? Well, this is where maybe I'd use an even shorter time frame. Let's go to a one-minute chart. And you could have gotten in either, I mean, conservatively, you could have gotten in right here um, and picked up, you know, 35 pips on a one-minute chart. If you wanted to be more aggressive, you could have gone in right right here at this candle because we had price come up, came down, failed to make a new low. Again, this is a very, very short time frame. But, you know, you have to be able to read these little subtle moves right here. Okay, so aggressively you could have gotten in around here, and then you potentially could have picked up 57 pips on this reversal back into the zone. So, again, guys, if you don't get the initial signal like we had on the Aussie Swiss, uh, getting in on the Aussie Swiss, you know, back here when it crossed through this zone or bounced off this zone, then those, then these reversal trades back into those price levels, if it's already pulled far away from there, is another option. 
Okay, I didn't take any of those trades again today because, again, I wasn't really near my charts all that much other than maybe the first hour this morning, and I, I just wasn't comfortable. And it's a Friday, and honestly, guys, you're better off just staying liquid in cash, you know, and, and not rushing and forcing a trade that's not there because chances are it won't work out. So so I'm fine with that to end the week like that, um, and that's it. So on the uh, futures market, just really quick, I did not take any trades today in the futures market. I didn't really see any setups. This was the five-minute chart of the NASDAQ, which is the one I prefer to trade. And we opened the market uh, this morning at 13.30. So here is our market open right at the lows. And we did go higher, and we have been trending a little bit higher today. This is this area where price is sitting right now. This will be an interesting zone for next week, right? All the way back here. All right. So we'll see what this does next week. If we bust out of this zone, then we'll probably make a short-term run higher. But otherwise, this is a good potential area to sell off of next week. Out to the longer time frame, here's the one hour or two hour. We're clearly in a downtrend. But if we take out this area, then I, I'd be looking for for buys, you know, at minimum back to like this area here. But there was not, I didn't take any trades here today. So I just wanted to cover that. And again, um, I, I probably would have considered a long if I was home and traded it back to this area, which would have turned out to be okay. But given the fact that I, I wasn't comfortable um, making a quick snap judgment on this um, with the prospect of this turning lower earlier, I just decided just to stay liquid today. So, uh, and again, it's Friday, so it's a, it's a little bit you know slower market on Friday. Although the uh, this market tends to still move a little better than the forex market does throughout the day on Friday. So, anyways, guys, so I'm going to leave it there, and uh, we'll uh, continue to update you on this strategy next week. And uh, but it's not a bad strategy, and it doesn't give you a ton of trades. And said I only you know, analyze about nine pairs, so it's not like I'm looking at 25, 30 pairs either. If I did, maybe I'd have more opportunities, and maybe I'll expand it as I test this. But I'm trading pairs that, because one of the things, guys, is because this is a five-minute chart, and because it's a day trade, you're not talking about a lot of pips here, okay? On any one of these trades, even if you get a prime entry, at most you're talking about, you know, for most of these pairs is, you know, 35, 40 pips, maybe eke out a 50 here and there if you just nail it dead. But to be honest with you, you're probably talking about, you know, on average, probably about 30 pip gains. And so you're not talking about a lot of pips, and so um, you have to position size accordingly. Otherwise, you'd just be nickel and diming. I'm not telling you to, to trade um, crazily, but... Uh, and you know you got to control your risk based on your account size, but these particular pairs that I have chosen, these nine pairs, I chose very carefully because they have a higher U.S. dollar per pip value than other pairs. Okay, and just so you know what they are, it's Aussie dollar, dollar Swiss, Euro dollar, pound dollar, Euro pound, pound Kiwi, Aussie Kiwi, Kiwi dollar, and CAD Swiss. Okay, and you know probably the most unusual ones out of that list is Kiwi Swiss, Aussie Swiss, CAD Swiss, not heavily traded pairs and not pairs that move all that much. You know they move on average uh, about you know anywhere from you know 40 to 50 pips a day, and uh, you know so the trade-off to that is yeah the pip value is is worth more but the um, it might not be, they don't move a lot either. So it's kind of a little bit of a trade-off. But when I do get into a trade, if it's not going to be a lot of pip movement, I'm going to make more per pip on these pairs than I would on something else. It's not a huge difference. Like I think these uh, Swiss crosses, you know, are worth about um, ten dollars. You know, uh, well, on a standard lot, are worth about ten dollars and change a piece. Whereas the, the dollar crosses like the Aussie dollar, Euro dollar, Kiwi dollar are worth exactly $10 a piece for a, a standard lot or 10 cents on a micro, $1 on a mini lot. And like I said, these Swiss crosses and the Euro cross or Euro pound are actually a little bit more than that. 
So although they don't move a ton, each pip is worth a little bit more. So it's risk, it's trade off, right? I mean, I could trade the euro yen or the dollar yen. It moves well over 100 pips a day, but the pip value is, you know, significantly less. Um, it's only like on a standard lot. It's only like I think like 70 cents uh, uh, or seven dollars uh, on a standard lot, or 70 cents on a on a mini on a uh, mini lot. So, but you'll get more pip movement. So it's kind of like I said, it's risk reward. But um, so as I play around with this, I may expand the number of pips I'm looking at because honestly, if I'm following this strategy and I'm only deciding to trade off of when this setup presents at New York Open, it's it's going to be very, very easy for me to quickly go through and look and see if there are any setups. The only question will be later in the, you know, if I don't get any of those setups, do I want to take any trades as they come back into this zone or not? And that's where having more pairs on the board potentially gets you into an over-trading situation where, you know, because you, you don't want FOMO and you want to take a trade that's, you know, not maybe not the best. So for now, I'm just keeping it to the ones that are trading around these zones. And uh, I'll expand thing as, things out as I go. Anyways, guys, I'll leave it there. Questions, comments, please drop them down below. Hope you get a little value out of it. Uh, again, continue to, you know, check these things out if you want and understand, you know, this is a short time frame strategy, so if you don't have the time to watch your charts at least the first half of the day, then this might not be the strategy for you. But um, it, it is um, there is definitely value in this in this um, you know this price level. Not every day, not every pair, as you can see, but uh, when it does line up, it it really works very very well. So and it's very predictable. So all right, guys. Smash that like button, appreciate it, and leave any comments below, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Have a great weekend. We'll catch up soon.